All right, I have some thoughts. This was a big episode for The Bachelor. Got to talk about MJ. I want to talk about Matt. I feel like I'm getting a better idea of who Matt is. And of course, I want to talk about Katie. So MJ. MJ MJ was the third person whose head rolled as a consequence of bullying, right? Matt, and I think ABC, wants to make it really clear that there will be no bullying in the Bachelor house. Uh, But I think that we need to make a distinction between, you know, Queen Victoria, Anna, and then MJ. Queen Victoria and Anna, in my estimation, were kind of pure bullies, right? They, They entered the show acting like bullies from the start. They were pretty aggressive in that way. I think that MJ's response was the typical response of the average kid on the schoolyard who just wants to avoid being picked on, right? Two, first two or three episodes, she wasn't really talking or attacking anybody. She wasn't really talking to Queen Victoria. She was trying to align and was pretty quiet. And then the new crop of women joined the show. It was clear that Anna and Queen Victoria were attacking them. And there was a really sort of easy option for the quieter women to join Queen Victoria and get on that side of things, right? There was a sort of a clear path to avoiding being picked on. And I think that's all that MJ did. She just aligned with Queen, with Queen Victoria and Anna because she didn't want to be picked on and she wanted to be part of the in-group, right? And so she made the comment, I think it was, we're varsity, you're JV, which in my world is a pretty benign comment, not a big deal. And I think she got bitten for it. And I think, I, I really think it sucks. I don't think it has anything to do with her character. It doesn't make her a bad person. None of those things, you know, the biggest implication I can think is it does show that she doesn't have as much of a backbone, right? She didn't stand up to Anna or Queen Victoria when the bullying was happening. Um, but the reality is that there's whatever 20 plus women there, and the vast majority of them did not stand up to the bullying. So she's not really unique in that way. She just got bit by it. So I was sad to see her go. I felt like it was a little bit unfair, um, but but whatever, right? So she's gone. The rest of the show sort of moves forward pretty normally, except for I feel like Matt was different on this episode. So I have long kind of complained privately, not in here, but just sort of complained that I felt like he was the most like boring person to center the bachelor around. Like you never really saw much from him other than, you know, him making out with everybody and being super handsy, you know, and and always wearing turtlenecks. The guy wears more, I've seen more turtlenecks on Matt than I have in the last 25 years. But beyond those kind of defining characteristics, I felt like he was a pretty vanilla type character. And I always was like, why did they pick him? But this was the first episode where we got to see a little bit more, like a little bit more of his sense of humor when he was interacting with his best, uh, his roommate and best friend on his date with Katie. I felt like he was more fun and enjoyable. And I was thinking, oh my God, I actually like this guy. I get why they put him forward. And it just makes me think that ABC has done a bad job of editing his one-on-one dates because all I see on his one-on-one dates is him saying, I hear you, I feel you. You want to make out. That seems to be like the natural progression. I hear you. Appreciate you being vulnerable. I feel you. And then a make out. And there's not much more depth to him. Uh, But this episode, I really felt like he actually showed some of that. And I love at the end of every episode when they do like like the two minutes of him having fun, whether it's him trying to dance or in this episode, it was him trying to do karate. I think all that stuff was cool and, and humanizes him a little bit. So, Katie gets let go today. Let's talk about Katie. I don't think that Katie was devastated that she's not going to be Matt's future wife. I think Katie was sad that she lost The Bachelor. I think that's what was hard for her. My sense is that she was, in comparison to the other contestants, much more intellectually sophisticated, uh, much more emotionally composed, much more strategic, much more intentional. I feel like she was intellectual in her approach to things versus uh, emotional or truly vulnerable. Like if you compare her to the other candidates, I feel like she was the most... um, cognizant of how she was acting and and I was critical initially she joined the you know when she got out of the limo she pulled out this gargantuan vibrator and said I can't live without this and you know and I kept I was like that was that's your that's your entree to the show that's how you want to start things um but in retrospect I think that she 
thought, what's the best way to get attention? How do I get this guy to like me and want to keep me around? And I think she thought if I am this sort of histrionic bimbo type figure, that's going to get me far in this show. I think it was a, a, a competitive uh, strategy on her part. And then Sarah became very emotional. And I think Sarah, um, or I think Katie naturally protected her and saw that no one else would. And I think that Katie then recognized that that was her path to differentiating herself from the other women on the show. And so at that sort of pivot point, right, when she was dealing with Sarah, that's when Katie became sort of the Katie that we saw here, you know, through the rest of the show where she was sort of much more discerning. She was the one that was willing to push back on the bullying. She was the one that had more transparent conversations with Matt about what was happening in the house. She stood up to a lot of people and she was comfortable being on the outside, which, which I think makes her super likable, super endearing. I do think that she was not as into Matt as the other women, right? I think she kept it sort of at arm's distance and was playing the game, but I don't think that she was desperately in love with him, right? The other women keep saying, I'm falling for you, right? They're sort of over the top, all in to him. And I think Katie wasn't, I think she's not. And so I, th I think for that reason, Matt probably made a good decision because I because she wasn't all into him. And I also think he's attracted to women that are, super sort of subservient and deferential and, you know, sort of all into the, to him, right? He likes, I think he likes that type of woman and I don't think Katie's that type. So I'm sorry to see her go, probably the right decision for Matt. Um, and I really hope they make her the next, the next bachelorette. I think that if she has all of the men pursuing her, I think she'd be fantastic because I think she's uh, intelligent enough and discerning enough to really have dynamic conversations with people and really pick and choose who's the best fit for her. So sorry to see her go. Wish the best for her and hopefully we see her again. So thank you for listening. If you like these kind of overviews of the show where I dive into the individual characters, please hit the like button, subscribe, and you'll see the next one that comes out next week. Thank you so much for listening. 